Jen, we are continuing. Of course, we are with our um, series, True Identity. True Identity, Who Am I in Christ? Mm -hmm. And last week, you know, um, as we have started this, uh, this is, I think, uh, our fourth week. And um, it's been three weeks, I think two weeks now, when we started our uh, our um, Paul's uh, letter to the church in Ephesus. And again, this is a beautiful letter. And I love this because um, uh, this is a letter that's been... Um, um, dubbed as the queen of all the his epistles or letters and i mean the just un, uh, the, just the uh, espousing just the unpacking of the mystery of the blessings that we have in christ this is one of those that you have to really go back and to read over and over again for us to be truly understand and appreciate what paul is writing and also i just wanted to say alex fajardo mm -hmm. good evening or good morning joining from japan thank yes. you thank you for connecting with us today. So that being said, I want you to open your Bible to Ephesians chapter 1, and that's what we're going to talk about. And Jen, are you ready for this? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. so the topic is about adopt adoption, or we have been adopted. And as I have discussed that a little bit lengthily uh, on Sunday, and defining that in the cultural context of what Paul was saying, that's very important. Because again, when we look at adoption in, this, in our context, it's like, uh, an orphan being adopted to be a part of a of a family but yet in the time of Paul especially to the audience that he was speaking to this is something different mm -hmm. so let's look at the verse and uh, it, praise be to the God verse 3 and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who bless us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ that's the key here the key of this verses um, 1 to 14 actually is in verse 3 all of them. He has blessed us. God has blessed us with all spiritual blessing. And the operative word there is in Christ. Mm -hmm. All of this is because of our union with Christ. All of this is because of our connection and our relationship with Christ. And then he begins to unfold this uh, from verse 4 to uh, 14. And Jen, I just wanted to say this an additional. Actually, if you're going to read this in the original Greek, actually verse 3 to 14 is just one sentence. Hmm. Yeah. Because Paul was just, again, inspired by the Holy Spirit. Just, you know, writing this. And what a beautiful... 1 to 14? Uh, 1 to 14. It's oh, just wow. one sentence. Yes, it's overlapping. That's why when you read that, but the thought and the idea, the biblical truth is so deep that we need to understand really what we are talking about here. So who we are in Christ. Yes, the question is so simple, Jen, but yet I believe it is the first time that we're having a grasp of what it is really as we are answering this question, reading Ephesians chapter 1, verses 1, actually, to 14. Mm -hmm. And even now, we're just, you know, camping on verse 5 and 6. So much, so much uh, realization, so much truth. Right. And I think that is uh, uh, not just here in our heads, but the, going down uh, deep in, inside our hearts, right, Jen? Mm -hmm. I think you mentioned that to me when we were driving after preaching yeah. to San Diego, uh, and, and driving to uh, Pasadena. Yeah, you mm -hmm. want me to share it? Yes, please. Because, yeah, mm -hmm. just so really quickly, you know how Robert and I were driving from San Diego to Pasadena every Sunday after church? And so in that uh, two hours of drive, more than two hours of driving. Uh, yeah, two, uh, two hours, 20. Uh -huh, to Pasadena. Uh, one of our conversations there was about the message uh, last Sunday, and I felt like um, I, I couldn't stop. While he was preaching, I just felt... Uh, the presence of the Lord and there's just something that God is doing in my heart that it I couldn't help but really be in tears while he was talking and I couldn't understand it but it was just I felt like I was little by little grasping or understanding what it truly means to be a child of God yeah. because we mm -hmm. we do understand what being a child means you know but what does it really mean to be a child of God? And so I've heard that several times. I've been a Christian for a long time. You know, I've, I've heard that said over and over again. But I truly, to be honest with you, as we go through this series, I feel like more and more I am able to grasp and understand yep. it more, more by the help of this Holy Spirit, uh, uh, of course. And and having a, a biblical foundation, I think, that's is very right. important. Mm -hmm. And that's why in verse 4 it says, For He chose us in Him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight, in love. Mm -hmm. So the choosing, the election, we talked right. about that, the election that we belong and we are favored, actually, that's yes. the word. Mm -hmm. So that's the first thing. And now he moves on to verses 5 and 6, 
And we're going to focus on this next one. Not yeah. only that you are chosen, but according to Paul, he predestined. Again, mm -hmm. predestination. You know, uh, deciding, deciding in, in advance. advance. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, you're listening okay, to the yes, preaching. Of yes. Course. And to be adopted as his sons. And again, this is not being gender insensitive because the whole uh, 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 understanding here is adoption into sonship. It is a, you know, a legal process that I'm going to explain to us a little bit because we talked about this last Sunday. So if you have not watched or you have not attended our Sunday service, I encourage you, please go to our, um, what's that, YouTube channel? Mm -hmm. And then please... Um, YouTube.com slash Victory SoCal. Yes, mm -hmm. and, and, and go to that. So what is this adoption? And again, just like what I was mentioning, Jen, adoption in our context is totally different from the adoption uh, concept during the Greco-Roman culture, which in you know the people in Ephesus are a part of. So if we are not careful, I believe that we are going to have some cultural gap and we're going to go interpret this the way we wanted to interpret it based on our culture, but yet it is not. Mm -hmm. So I think that's why when we read our Bible, it's very important that we are, uh, there are some implicit uh, um, things that was being written because uh, it was being sent to a particular audience, mm -hmm. but yet uh, we are not that audience. That's why we have to understand what is going on here. So the word adopted there is, of course, in, the, in our culture, an orphan being put into a family, but in the Roman culture, it was actually Greco-Roman culture. It's actually totally different. It was not an in, in, infant who was being adopted. Actually, grown men are being adopted. Grown men is because here's the meaning. was a legal act in the Greco-Roman world. That is adoption, as you could see that on your screen. Uh, uh, to declare a son or someone's, someone else son as an heir. So the whole process of this is that if someone is going to be declared as an heir that's legally give someone the right to the family inheritance mm -hmm. and like in any other roman greco-roman culture an adoption is either the merging of two families so that their political succession inheritance uh, you know all of that would be um will continue and also there's that uh, being put as an heir or so someone that is in charge, actually. Mm -hmm. So that's what it is. So when a Greco-Roman adoption is, uh, it's a legal process, is have taken place or ratified, here's the thing, there is a change of family. So you are moving from one family to another. Mm -hmm. That's very important to understand on this because again, as Paul was saying this, in our time, Jen, when we hear adoption, there's a stigma. There's right. it's a negative connotation that You're goes right. with us, with that, but in, Paul's time, it was not actually that. There is a celebration, a celebratory in a sense, because they were like, because of these four things, a change of family. Imagine if you're a slave, now you're, you know, part of a prominent family. Or if you are a slave, now you are a citizen. Mm -hmm. Then that change of name, yes. your name is changed. Right. So because you are going to go have the, uh, the name of the family, which is, you know, the one that is adopting you also change in status from, you know, because a certain status comes with certain privileges, um, you know, from if you move here in the U.S., you're a tourist in status, then you become an immigrant or a green card holder and citizen of this nation. Uh, just, a, just an example, in each and every status, there is a privilege that the other one doesn't have. Right. So this is what it is. There's a change of status and standing. And last one, there is also a change in position. Mm -hmm. What is that? Because all of this is for people to understand that you are now an heir. All right? So, Jen, I just wanted to say this. Uh, once you are adopted, it is considered that you are born uh, in through that family, to that family now because of the change of the name and the change of family. So now you are considered like the bloodline of the one adopting you. So again, this is different from the Jewish culture because Jewish culture is uh, purely by birth. Yes, there are people that have been adopted, but yet, you know, talking about adoption in Jewish culture, that's why you see them, you know, the son of, the son of, the son of, the son of this, the son of that is because again, they're tracing the bloodline. Right. But yet when Paul was saying this to the church in Ephesus, there was a, I believe if you're sitting there, this is just me, that there is that celebration, there's that smile, right. there's that... Uh, 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 what an encouragement that rose up in the hearts of the church in Ephesus because most of them are Gentile. Because what is the implication of that? If the Jews are the one who have claimed the promise, 
and, and, or what was the, the promise was given to them rather. Now Paul was saying to them that you are now part of that family. That means if the Jews are heir, so also you are an heir together with them. Mm -hmm. And that's why imagine that. So for all your life, you've been looked down as a second citizen or second class as far as the, 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 the religious relationship is all about. But now Paul was saying, no, 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 actually you are adopted as sons. Mm -hmm. And Paul uh, mentioned this actually in, in the book of Galatians, in the book of, book of Romans. And let's look at that uh, in, in Galatians chapter 4. I mentioned this last Sunday. Look at this. Because you are sons, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts. The spirit who calls out Abba Father, which is Papa. So you are no longer a slave. Look at that. The, the, the change of position, the change of... Uh, now, the first one is son, change of family. Now, but since you are a son... Uh, but but a son, and since you are a son, God has made you also an heir. Look at that. The position change. A change of standing, a change of position, and also there, the change of family and the name because of you being part of the family of God. Mm -hmm. Wow. So another one that I didn't discuss last Sunday that I wanted to focus on now is Romans chapter 8, verse 15 and 16. And again, if you want to comment on our comment section, you're very much welcome to. And also ask some few questions. If you have time, I'll be able to answer some. So if we have time, all right? So now let's move to 8, uh, Romans chapter 8. Look at this. The spirit you receive does not make you slaves. Mm -hmm. Because the Holy Spirit has been given to us as a guarantee, you know, as a seal. We're going to talk about that in the later part of this, uh, actually, of this uh, spiritual blessings. I don't want to go dive dig, uh, deeper into that so so that you will live so so that you will so you will live so that you live. so that you live in fear again okay i'm sorry about that rather the spirit you receive brought about your adoption to sonship that's the same word that the Paul, that the apostle paul used and by him we cry abba father look at this the spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are god's children the Holy Spirit has been deposited in you, okay? Testifies if you're sons and daughters of God. Mm -hmm. And look at this in verse 17. Now, if we are children or sons and daughters, then we are heirs. Mm -hmm. Heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. Sounds familiar to you? He's repeating the same concept in Galatians chapter 4. And look at this. If indeed we share in his suffering in order that we may also share in his glory. So if the question is we are co-heirs and heirs, that means when you look at that, Jen, what do you mean by that? So that means you're heirs. Uh, that means we are elevated into this irrevocable position, being a God's uh, child of God because of his grace, because of his mercy that was extended to us, because of this positional status. Remember, the change of position in Christ, mm -hmm. okay? We are, we are given further um, a blessing, which is... The gift of grace, and now we are being elevated as heirs. Not only that, as co-heirs with Christ. Mm -hmm. The literal meaning of heir is this: someone has been appointed to receive an inheritance. Mm -hmm. So that means if you are an heir, that means there is an inheritance waiting for you. Right. So the question, Jen, now having this now, this is what we're going to talk about. What is our inheritance? Wow. So because again, oh, we're, again, there's a lot. And again, the physical aspect of this inheritance that you gonna be, you are going to be blessed by God because now we are co-heirs together by faith because of, you know, Abraham's, what was given to Abraham, the blessing, the physical things. Yes, you're going to have all of those, but I'm going to focus on the spiritual blessings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what are those inheritance. inheritance that God had given us now that we are what? Heirs and co-heirs and get ready now because this is what we're going to talk about all right and here's the first one what is our inheritance salvation mm -hmm. salvation what is our inheritance god what saved us hebrews chapter 1 verse 14 are not all angels ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation so that's the writer in Hebrew saying that the ministering, the angels were sent to what? To serve us, those who will what? Inherit salvation. And again, what is salvation? Salvation is deliverance from danger or suffering. Mm -hmm. All right? So, so that means if we are in trouble, someone is being saved, that's your salvation. That means salvation is to save. Okay? To save is to deliver or to protect. 
The word carries the idea of victory, health, and preservation. Sometimes we use this word salvation, really, but we don't know what it means. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That means deliverance, all right? What are we saved from, if that's the case? So if we're going to be delivered, we're going to be saved, what are we be, what are we saved from? So this, uh, we look at the Bible, we are saved from wrath of God because of our sin. Yep, because of sin, God judges sin, and then God came to save us, to salvation, to save us from the wrath of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because you could have all everything in this world, but guess what? But having the wrath of God, that's the most scariest thing that you're going to ever have in your whole life. Mm -hmm. That's why when you look at the doctrine of heaven and hell, let's look at hell. And some people are saying hell is where Satan dwell. And yes, that's the abyss where at the end, that's the end ending of the enemy, Satan, and all his cohorts. But at the end of the day, people are saying God is not in hell. Uh, the Bible says that God is everywhere. He's omnipresent. But the presence of God in hell is a God executing or ex what? expressing his wrath over sin. So hell is a place where in it's hell is because you see God mad. Mm -hmm. Because he's mad at sin. Right. And you don't want to be in a place where God is mad. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that is salvation. Deliverance. God has delivered us. So I want you to listen up now. You are an heir. And the greatest thing that you're going to have here on earth is that, you know, that God has what had delivered us. Mm -hmm. Amen. So not only now, but also in the future. Because judgment is going to come. Remember at the end times, judgment is going to come. And God is going to judge the good and the bad. Mm -hmm. God is what? This salvation is God. God has delivered you and saved you from God's wrath. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm -hmm. Comment, Jen? Yeah, I'm still thinking, okay. I'm still processing it, <laughs> but this is good. Okay. Yeah, because I always just think of salvation as being, uh, you know, saved, you know, just... Uh, uh, yeah, good, the word is saved, but you're uh, saved from what? From what, exactly. There you go. So, yeah, I, and it didn't occur to me. It's always like, you know, being saved from, you know, um, it's interesting because I've never really thought of that. That it's actually God's wrath that you are being saved from when you talk about salvation. Because it's always in uh, pointing towards internal like you, it means that when you're saved, you know, you're protected, you know, that you'll, uh, you'll not experience all those negative things, mm -hmm. you know, because you're saved, yep. right? But... Um, on a deeper <laughs> level mm -hmm. and it, it's it's it makes sense because um because we are not also experiencing the wrath of god yeah. in a sense um that's god why you that's future. why you're receiving the favor, okay, favor because exactly. that's the that's, opposite that's right <laughs> that's right yes. exactly what it is you're not receiving that judgment of god yes. here on earth here right here right now is because god has saved you um and you are get, getting his favor instead yep. and his mercy. And that is his grace over your life. So look at this, um, Romans chapter 5, verse 9. Since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? Oh, mm -hmm. Romans what? Romans chapter 5, verse 9. Mm -hmm. We are being saved from God's wrath. So that's why it's salvation. So we have never asked that question. We have used that, you know, God is going to save or, you know, one of this blessing, this inheritance is salvation. And why is that important? Guess what? You, you, be, you want to be in a place where there's favor, there's blessing, never in, God's, in a place of God's wrath. That is a very, very scary place. So Romans 5, 9, put that and read that, okay? Another one, uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, 9. Mm -hmm. uh, for God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Wow. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 9. So, for, it, for God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. So, that's the inheritance that you're receiving, actually. The inheritance of salvation. God saving you. Instead of receiving wrath, God is what? carries this, that you are delivered. That's why it's a what? 
deliverance from danger or suffering. Mm. So, wow. Mm. Interesting, isn't it? Yeah. So imagine this. And Paul is saying that you are now a co-heir. So that means you are expecting this inheritance. And what is that inheritance? The spiritual inheritance? My salvation. That I could enjoy now and also in the future. But so, that doesn't mean we're not going to suffer here. That we're it doesn't to mean that. I'm going to yeah. explain that a little bit more. Because yeah, okay. again, he said that we shared in his suffering according to the text. That's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But yet, what he was saying is not suffering here on earth, but suffering the wrath of God. The wrath, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, so the next one. Here's your another inheritance. And I think this is where people are a little bit more confused. Salvation, and then here's the next one. Eternal life. Mm -hmm. So this is different from salvation. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. okay. So again, God's gift is to give us eternal life, right? So you are saved and delivered, and then God gives you eternal life. This is one of your inheritance. Look at First Peter. All right. This is First Peter, chapter one, verse three and four. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In His great mercy, He has given us new birth, new life, being born again. In other translation, it's all the same. That's eternal life. All right, into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you. Mm -hmm. Wow. So this one is just too many things to discuss here, but I'm just going to make it very simple. This eternal life, according to uh, Peter, is that an inheritance that will never perish. You know, why? Because... It is there with God, which is God is the Alpha and Omega. It's not going to spoil. It's not going to fade. Kept in heaven for you. So let's eternal life. We have to understand this in two words. And sorry, but I have to use the Greek word for this for us to be able to understand. Okay, the word eternal is Ionios. That's A-I-O-N-I-O-S. Okay, Ionios. It means an ending. That's why it is eternal. It is an ending. All right. So um, let me just read this. Somebody commented. Uh, he had believed on the Son and the everlasting life. It had believed in that the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abided not on him. All right. Good. So so that being said, but also focuses on the quality or the characteristic of this long life. So that's what it is. Okay. It means an ending. Eternal is an ending. All right, and the word life there actually, you've heard this before, it's the word zoe. Mm -hmm. Okay, Z O E. That's why the Bible says, when God breathed on Adam and then he had the life, that's zoe. All right, so life which indicates not only biological existence but a fullness of life. Mm -hmm. So, when you look at that, so eternal life actually is an ending life. That is bountiful. So that means it's not simply simply that it never ends, but also fullness of life that is an ending. Ah, so that's the real meaning of eternal, eternal life. So when you have received the gift of the right to become children of God, for God's love the Lord, uh, that He gave His only Son, that whoever believes in Him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. It's eternal life. That means the promise there is that. It is a fullness of life that is unending. Mm -hmm. In the scripture, eternal life is strongly connected with Jesus Christ. It's only through Jesus Christ or in Him that we experience or receive eternal life. Mm -hmm. John 17 verse 3. And this is eternal life that you know the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. Mm -hmm. So this is one of our... So the moment... That's why Paul was saying that the spiritual blessing in Christ... Okay, now you are now an heir. There's an inheritance for you. Number one, salvation. Number two, eternal life. So that this, this is just, you're going to live forever. But if you're going to live forever miserably, that's not eternal life. Right. Actually, we're all going to live forever. Yeah. But the only question is where? Mm -hmm. Either in the place where you experience God's wrath or in the place where you experience God's presence and favor. So this eternal life that we're talking about here is that fullness of life that is an ending. That means you there is the presence of God. Mm -hmm. The fullness. That's why you were saying, in His presence there is fullness of joy. You surround us. 
with your, oh sorry. <laughs> so that's what it is. Eternal life is this uh, eternal zoe, the fullness, the genuineness of life, the quality and the quantity of life. Actually, when you put that together, quality and quantity of life mm -hmm. that God gives you. Mm -hmm. Ooh. So this eternal life is kept in heaven for us. This is something that we are looking forward to. Looking this forward is, to. Is an inheritance yes. when we, you because know. when we, when you die, mm -hmm. because this flesh is not eternal. Right, exactly. So and yet, you know, the second coming, you know, everything is going to be together. We're going to be given a resurrected body if you die before. But yet that is eternal life waiting for you. Waiting I love this because look at this. This is waiting for you in heaven. So it's, it doesn't perish. So... Mm -hmm. That means it's it's an ending. It's there. It's it's not gonna grow um, expired. <laughs> you know, there's no expiration to this. There's it says it doesn't spoil. It doesn't fade. That means the luster, the genuineness, the bountifulness of this gift remains, yeah. regardless of how much time till you get this inheritance. Yeah. That is a, something that we really look forward to. I mean, uh, you know, living in this world, you know, it's not fullness. This is not the fullness that God no. intends. This is not the abundant life that God wants for us. Although we could taste a little bit of it, you know, but still because we live in an imperfect world, uh, you know, it, it, is, it is nothing compared to what God has for us exactly until god heaven. restores everything, everything the new heaven and the new earth this is just a foretaste it's not even close actually mm -hmm. to what god has prepared for us yes imagine mm -hmm. imagine this um there's a song by keith green he said that imagine if god created the heavens and the earth everything in seven days and if god has been what preparing a place for us for two thousand years mm. wow can you imagine how does that look wow I know. I hope so. you're excited about that. What God is preparing for us, I'm sure it's gonna be wonderful, exactly. amazing. I don't know. And of course, I don't want to have my eternal life at this particular moment. So, but yes, it's secured. <laughs> I already have it. But that's an inheritance. That's why inheritance. the question of inheritance is this: I'm gonna receive this. Yes. This is what God promised. So it, because it, I am adopted. Yes. Yes. So it gives it for me. This word just gives me hope. Yeah, because, actually, it's hope. Yeah, because, you know, as we live here in this world, you know how difficult it is, you know, the the incompleteness, the yeah. insufficiency, yeah. the lack that we are experiencing in this world. But what you're just giving us a picture of is the idea or the thought that, yes, Lord, I have something that's waiting for me that is far better, far better than what I could ever have in this world. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And that's why he said it's a living hope. Imagine this. That's why if you understand this inheritance, mm -hmm. you're not you're, just, you're not gonna live for the moment. Right. Then you are willing to give more. You'll be willing to bless right. other more. You'll be willing to let go of mm -hmm. things here on earth while people are building kingdoms and inheritance here. That's not what we're doing. Yeah, that's good. This is very important. Yeah. That's why most of us doesn't understand this as believers. That's why we're living for just now. So we're having gr what, grudges and offense prolonged because you're just living for now instead of living for the future and our hope and what God has for us. Yeah. Come on. If things are not going to be settled here, believe me, there's going to be that time where everything is going to be made right. If you've been wrong, you've been maligned, you've been what? Uh, what else? God is going to vindicate you because there is going to be a time where all of this will be made right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if, you know, things are not going well here in this world, like you don't feel the comfort or the convenience or, you know, just fullness or, yeah. you know, you don't experience it here, but we can be assured that we will experience it with God. Yes, you that's know? why the early Christians, the martyrs, they are willing to, to die, die. Because they have looked at their situation here on earth as if con compared to eternal. They're like, no, I'm willing to risk my life because there is an inheritance for me that is a lot better than this one. Yeah. Yeah. They're wow. not groping for what's here. Yeah. They're not 
seeking to grab hold on what's here instead yes. they're grab hold of the inheritance that we have in Christ and that That's is amazing. your inheritance mm -hmm. this is just you know dawning more and more on me yes. you know we know this but it's just I love that we're you know diving deeper into it and just processing it together because this is very important especially in the world that we live in right now yes and that's why this is very important as we lay down this foundation before we pray because this is who you are this mm -hmm. is your identity that you have been adopted as such according to the you know greco-roman culture sports using that biblical truth that he is using as a metaphor is this that you are what an heir there is an inheritance waiting for you salvation mm -hmm. eternal life Yes. Eternal life. That's great. Okay, and here's the last one. All of that means nothing if we have we don't have this last one. Okay? Means nothing if you don't have this. And what's that? God Himself. As our inheritance. As an inheritance. Mm -hmm. This is something that has been uh, written in the Bible. We're gonna look at Deuteronomy in the Old Testament and then we're gonna push that the same thing. You know, as you could see this in the Old Testament and in the New. And what is that? Look at this in Deuteronomy. The Lord said to Aaron, You will have no inheritance in their land, nor will you have any share among them. I am your share, your inheritance among the Israelites. Mm -hmm. Because again, out of the Israelites, they have uh, what separated the Levites or the priest. And God says, No, 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 I will be your inheritance. Mm -hmm. Interesting, isn't it? So now as you read that, actually there's a lot. You could read that as well in uh, you know, easy kill, but I've got some few just to, you know, make sure that I establish this biblically. And also Joshua chapter 13, verse 33. This is when all the um, uh, lands are being distributed. Remember, we studied this in our uh, series. And then, but to the tribe of Levi, okay, Moses had given no inheritance because the Lord, the God of Israel, is their inheritance as he had promised them. Mm -hmm. From Deuteronomy to here. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And last one. The psalmist actually declared this. Lord, you are you alone are my inheritance, my cup of blessing. You guard all that is mine. Mm. Wow. Look at that. You alone, Lord, is my, my cup of blessing. Mm. As the psalmist would say. Mm. Now you read this, and this is a concept that is in the Bible. Yeah. We could rejoice having salvation. We could rejoice having eternal life and blessings. But the greatest inheritance is God himself. Mm -hmm. So this is our greatest inheritance. As a child of God, that is your greatest Insane. inheritance. Mm -hmm. This is something that you have actually now and also that is also in the future. Right. Because when, according to Revelation chapter 21, look at this. And this is the Apostle John, of course, saying this. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, look, God's dwelling place is now among the people. He will dwell with them. They will be his people and God himself will be with them and be their God. Mm -hmm. Wow. That is the greatest inheritance. That's why Paul was unpacking this mystery as he was saying this and declaring this. I hope you are catching and grasping this biblical truth. And it's so, I don't know, it's so beautiful mm -hmm. for him to say that at the end of the day, you are an heir and you have salvation. You have an inheritance, but don't forget. And part of this blessing also that you have is God, God himself, your relationship with God is your greatest blessing of all. Because if you have everything, physical, oh, sorry, material blessing, if we don't have God, then we become idolaters. Mm -hmm. Those things become our, our, our idols. You know, the house become an idol, the work becomes an idol, but God is our greatest blessing because he is the one who had prov provided all of those to us. Yeah. Imagine this, as good as salvation is, as good as eternal life, without God, that's nothing. Mm -hmm. And that's your greatest inheritance. And the enemy wanted you, what? To, to prevent you from knowing this as your true identity, that you are in God's sons and also heirs and co-heirs with Christ. Yeah, because that really just changes our perspective. Yes. Rather than, you know, thinking of this world and, and thinking about what this world would offer we are thinking about what God offers as our inheritance. And he's saying, hey, it's not just the salvation. It's not just the eternal life. But I am your very inheritance. Yes. The relationship that we have with God is the very inheritance. Himself is what he is offering to us as our inheritance. And 
um, I love what you're saying that, you know, yes, you could have eternal life, but eternal life without relationship with the Father, without knowing God, then, you know, you live forever, but the very person who gave you purpose, meaning, life, you don't know that, then you've missed exactly you've missed eternal life like it's not gonna be a full life it's never yeah. gonna be an abundant life and, and, God. and the way to, re to receive this gen to see this gen is this god is a greatest inheritance because everything flows in from that in yeah. christ mm -hmm. you are never gonna have everything that i mentioned from that eternal life to salvation or whatever physical blessings or material blessings you want all is coming from him yeah. That's why he is your greatest inheritance because he could give you all of those. Because from him flows everything yes. that you'll ever need. That's why it just people are just so, sometimes we're so st stubborn that we are pursuing a lot of things except God, but we forget that, the, that everything flows from God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, life flows from him. And so even everything else flows from him. And so... We, this is just very, very, um, um, very insightful, I have to say. And I, I'm holding back, you know, again, tears. I don't know what's going on again with me. Uh, just listening here, I just feel like it's, I think it's settling in more. And I, I hope that as you are watching uh, and hearing this word, I, I, my prayer is that it's also sinking inside of you and you're understanding it more. I know these are like huge concepts like uh, things that you know you, you we, we don't normally talk about yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> regular day unpacking the word i think this is what the series is all about just a biblical grasp because of this biblical concept of what we have actually known but actually don't know okay. we know the words but we don't know really what it what is what it is yeah mm -hmm.